Welcome Wastelanders to Couch Soup's Watching Now one-off for Fallout Season 1. If you haven't already done so, you can watch the entire series on Amazon right now, just as we did, because they dropped that entire shit like a big old bomb and gave us all the episodes, all eight episodes of Fallout available all at once. And then we had to figure out what we were going to do because we originally wanted to do episode by episode weekly breakdowns of this show, but now we're doing it all at once. Hooray for us. I'm your host, Dan Morris. And with me, we have Ian McParland. Yo. <laughs> Yo. And Tim <laughs> by Seagull. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Extra emphasis on the syllables of your, your name. Bye. See goal. I see goal. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the crew here to do break down the season one of Fallout. Obviously, doing an entire show is going to be tough to do in like a relatively short amount of time on one podcast. So we're going to kind of hit on just some bullet points of the series. We're going to do our spoiler review of like some of our favorite moments throughout the show. Some of the things we didn't really like so much, some of our favorite characters. And then we're going to wrap it up with our overall feelings and thoughts of the entire show. But to get us started, we're going to talk briefly about our history with the franchise of Fallout, starting with you, Ian. Well, I can tell you that I don't really have a history with it, with Fallout. Not a really. A little, little bit, a little bit of history. A little, a little bit. bit, a little bit, maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I played and, and started Fallout 4, played about five hours, got to a point where I died com constantly and I couldn't be bothered at, at building a base <laughs> and then bounced. So why did you want to get in on Fallout the series? What was the draw there? It just looked fucking good as a TV show. Like it, it looked, it looked like it was done well. It looked like it was the right sort of budget, the right sort of setting, the right sort of actresses and actors in it. Um, I, I, I was just willing to set aside the actual game because I don't think it really matters for this. That I don't think you need any sort of idea about the game. Sometimes it might be better if you didn't. Um, I mean, good answer, honestly. How about you, Tim? So my experience with Fallout is minimal at best. So my experience is kind of similar to Ian's is that I played a few of the games here and there. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I started playing Fallout 76. Well, because Amazon gave it to me for free. So I was like, well, why the hell not? So what was your draw then to the, the show? Much like Ian, honestly. Um so I'm actually, I love Walter uh, Goggins. I think he's an mm. amazing actor. And pretty much anytime I see Walter Goggins in a show, I'm all, all already kind of like, okay, this is going to be good. Because whatever he's in, he, he gives it his all. He just, he, he, plays a, he plays a morally gray character so very well. Mm. And he just, he bites into that character so good. And so when you see that, I just, I just know it's going to be good. And so... Um, I had no idea who the ghoul was. I didn't, you know, uh, anything along those lines, but to know that that was being played by Walter Goggins for me, that was enough to get me into the show. And then to find al also that also has uh, Kyle McLaughlin in it, who I also like as an actor. Um, and so, yeah, so those two reasons alone. Uh, and then I was pleasantly surprised with Ella Purnell and I just thought she did really, really good uh, in this series. Not to say any expertise here, but that makes me kind of like the most experienced per person with the with the Fallout series because I have played all of Fallout Three, but I haven't played it since it came out in two thousand and seven. So it's been a while. Uh, I did play the game from start to finish, but I don't think I hundred percented it by any means, and I never played any of the DLCs. And I did play. I got Fallout Four when it came out, but it was one of those times where I bought like three games at once, so I kind of like dipped my toe into multiple games at the same time and I dropped off a of Fallout 4 pretty fast. So not a diehard fan by any means. I did play a little bit of New Vegas, but not much. And I know it's a very, very heavily uh, like loved ver uh, part of the series. A lot of people claim that New Vegas is the best of the franchise, but mm -hmm. that is you know on you as a player and what you prefer. But I will acknowledge, I know this, that it's among like most fans prefer New Vegas over all the other ones. And there's a lot of New Vegas stuff going on in this game or this show. And I, I, I'm not, again, I'm going to say it right here, right now. I'm no fallout expert by any means. None of us are. So no, absolutely not. <laughs> I will try my best to ground it. This, this discussion in the gamer perspective as the one who's played the most, but ultimately you're, you, this episode is going to be purely just fans of television watching a show. So, Let's move on to our spoiler review.
Being that we're covering the entire season in one go here, I'm not going to spend too long focusing on too much of the story because we'll be here forever. It takes us an hour to discuss one episode of any given show, so I don't want to do an eight-hour podcast. Um, so we're going to kind of just skim over some things. Then I want to get us started with a, a few certain points. So uh, specifically mentioning that the show is eight episodes. Each one was about an hour each, so it's a approximately eight hours for the entire show and it does tell an original story within the fallout universe which has been confirmed to be canon by bethesda so it does relate to the games mm -hmm. within the overall universe yeah it's, it's just weird to have canon in the in the, such a big rpg mm -hmm. universe when there's multiple endings to every game but you know if, if it if, if that's what they're saying then that's what they're doing <laughs> Well, to their credit, I will say this, like, I know we already all have pretty positive experiences with the show mm -hmm. and to make the show canon, I think speaks volumes because it is a video game property. And the fact that it actually ties into the overarching narrative builds upon that in such a way that other shows haven't or haven't been able to do because we have like The Last of Us that just came out last year and everybody sings high praises of that, but that's a retelling of the existing story. And it's, it differs too much, you know, and it you can't yeah. say it's canon because then it rewrites history essentially. <laughs> um, and then you've got the halo show, which it, it's gotten better, but it's also, it's its own story. It's its own narrative. It has nothing to do with the games. Really. You can't call it canon in so much of a way. because it's all, It's like an alt history, alt timeline kind of thing. Right. So to Fallout's credit, it works really well in its favor. And it opens up a lot of opportunities for where they can go with the show as well as the video games. Because then they could kind of like tie them into each other in fun ways. Could if, if we're going to wait 10 years for the next Fallout. Yeah, well, it's going to be a while because as far as we know, the next Fallout game isn't going to be until after Elder Scrolls 6, <coughs> which we're yeah. not going to see Elder Scrolls 6 for at least... I think another three or four years at best. Yeah. Let's uh, start off this discussion with like the characters, because I think the characters are some of the most important parts of the show. Because, like you said, the casting was really good. Um, we have Ella Purnell, Purnell, who played Lucy McLean. Uh, she's kind of like our pivotal, pivotal vault dweller character, much like you would play in the games. You usually experience the game through the eyes of a vault dweller coming out of the vault for the first time. So she's closest to the player character in representation and then we have maximus who's part of the brotherhood of steel he's played by aaron uh Mo is it moton or morton i might have had a typo Morton. 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 okay it is, uh, it is aaron moton uh, okay. so he's a member of the brotherhood of steel which is another big faction within the gaming un games universe um so that's another perspective on the wastelands and then we have the ghoul which I didn't know what to expect of the ghoul from the trailers because I'm, I know they're a part of the games. I know they're there, but holy crap, was he such an important character in the overall narrative? And it was so good. And like you said, Walter Goggins was such a great, just a great actor to play this character. Mm -hmm. so, he's so good. Mm -hmm. Like Walton Goggins is so good in pretty much everything. Like you said before, Tim, um, I loved him in, justified as boy crowder is one of my favorite characters of all time but in this just i even from like the, <laughs> the word go his introduction into the series but not the the pre-ghoul part of the ghoul mm. um but the the actual ghoul ghoul part of the ghoul um <laughs> google ghoul, 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 cool um he's in a grave he's got a drip of of some stuff some sort of stuff that keeps him Saying like these guys come around and try and get him to work for him, and uh, and and he just like a boss steps out of a, of, a, of a coffin and picks up a chicken just cause, and you know beats the shit out of them, kills two of them, maybe kills the third one. I don't, I don't probably, but I, I'm choosing to believe my head cannon he's not dead because that's Bubba from Forrest Gump, and I love Bubba from Forrest Gump. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was like, confused. I was like, what is Bubba in your notes? I'm like, what am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, ball shrimp, ball gotcha. ghoul. Shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, shrimp sandwich, 
I, I loved his, his, his introduction. It just set him up as, uh, <laughs> as, as, as a fucking badass with, a, with, with charisma. He's, yeah, it, it's, it was, it's great. It's just great. And who else could steal the show from Walter Gagnon's but Dog Meat, who I think was <laughs> a amazing, amazing part of the show. I was really glad that they included that because it's like, he's a dog from the game. You have a dog in the games? Get a dog in the show. Right. And of course, Brandy's big concern was they better not kill that fucking dog. And I'm like, I don't think they will. Because like he's a big part of Fallout 4. I think he's gonna be a big part of the show. Yeah. We'll get to that. They didn't kill dog meat. That's they didn't kill dog meat. <laughs> but they they heard him. I wasn't happy with that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh other important characters, like you mentioned, uh Kyle McLaughlin's character, Hank McLean. Uh, he's mm -hmm. of course uh, really well known for his role on Twin Peaks. I think he was the bad guy in the Flintstones movie. Am I remembering was that he? right? I think, yeah, so. I think so. I think he's the bad guy in the so, Flintstones yeah. movie. Like that was like I... right off of Twin Peaks. He did that. <laughs> he's also doing? the captain in How I Met Your Mother. Mm, just he right, the captain. the captain. I love that guy. As soon as I saw that he was yeah. cast from, like, uh -huh. perfect. Happy, sad, happy, the, sad. The lifeless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So overall, we had a really oh, great cast. Um, and then to round that out, too, with uh, Moldaver by Sarita Chowdhury, uh, I thought she was really good in the show, too. Lots of good people. Lots of great acting. Uh, we'll get even more into it. So, yeah, we've got a few guest stars that I want to shout out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the cameos were on point in this. Yeah. Nice. All right. So obviously, if you are watching this that we're assuming that you've watched the show and you're coming here for the sound of our sweet sweet voices and to agree with us vigorously with all of our opinions uh the beginning of the show gives us the introduction to our three primary characters we get the introduction to lucy's character who's, who's the vault dweller she's getting married off to join forces with another vault then you've got maximus who we learn is a brotherhood of steel member and that essentially he feels indebted to the brotherhood because they saved him as a young child from an explosion where he pulled a harrison ford in a fridge i did laugh at that when he stepped out of the fridge yeah, yeah. I, did we know i don't think it was i, I don't think that was nuclear it might not have been I, I could be just filling in the gaps of my brain thinking, ah, it's yeah, but, still, it's, yeah. but you see somebody crawl out of a fridge, you're automatically <laughs> going to go to yeah. Kingdom of the Crystal yeah. Skull and Indy, you know. And the bodies all were like sizzling and vaporized. But like, you, I don't know, like it, if it, if he was that close to the start of the, the explosion of a nuclear fucking bomb, even on a fridge. But a fridge. <laughs> yeah, but a fridge. And he survived. Just saying. I, I just don't, because it was because that w happened, what, 10, 15 years beforehand, it, it, no one would be able to go into it. I know everything's ra radioactive. Yeah, right, everything. But there's, there's levels in there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just Todd Howard's way of being like, I want an Indiana Jones reference in the show. <laughs> Maybe. 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 All right. Let's plug them games coming. <laughs> so the end of that episode, too, was what you were talking about, Ian, is the introduction to the ghoul, which is, like you said, it was a really mm -hmm. badass introduction uh, to have him come out of that coffin and he just rolls those guys just like a boss. Uh, I love that establishment of the character of his, like, none fucks given. I believe we get a little bit. Oh, yeah, the show opens with him in the past. So we see Walter Goggins playing his original like human version of his character uh, who was a big film star during like the 1950s, if that's the proper timeline here. Yeah, doing Westerns. Yeah. Cooper Howard. He was the actor Cooper Howard in the past. Yeah. Of course, um, named Howard. Yeah, I didn't put that together. <laughs> so makes sense. Uh, so there's a, obviously a massive transition in his character from him in the past to now he's a ghoul 200 years later and he just... He lives his own life as a bounty hunter. He does whatever it takes. And uh, yeah. it's just a great, great introduction to that character. Not to mention the introduction to like Lucy's character in that beginning with the like okie dokie. <laughs> um, yeah. What do we think of Lucy's character in that first episode? It made me laugh because watching her, you know, she's getting ready for her marriage and, and all these things. And, and she's talking, all of a sudden she's talking with Chet. And Chet killed me because all of a sudden I'm finding out that, wait a minute, they're cousins. And she's like, well, yeah, fooling around with your cousin is, is fine until you're getting ready. I'm like, I loved how casual that conversation right, was. Right. Yeah. 
I was like, pump the brakes here, kids. Um, yeah, they were doing they were doing some pumping of the brakes. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> and she was just like, yeah, it, it's fine, you know, until you're ready to get married. You have to leave those things behind. We have rules for a reason. <laughs> right. So that yeah, that that introduction just kind of kind of cracked me up where she kind of seemed a little bit her character was just kind of the happy go lucky aloof just you know ta da 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 life is grand look how great it is you know i banged my cousin but now i'm getting married and moving on so let me see think of the um i've seen articles or posts about people saying like they can break down the stats of the characters <laughs> from the video games and i think one of them was saying that her intelligence was really low but her luck is really high kind of thing and charisma was, must be high as well yeah like high charisma high luck but low intelligence Sk- skills good it's good skills low, yeah too trusting throughout that episode too it had me wondering i'm like okay in all the fallout games there's always something wrong with the vault that pushes yeah. the player out of the vault so i'm like what's it gonna be in this wasn't expecting the the raider murder fest and like her just like let's have sex woohoo let's go okie dokie you know right okie dokie <laughs> the the attitude towards sex in this show i thought was pretty funny it's like it's its own satire oh yeah <laughs> puritanical in one sense but you know not in the in in then a whole nother like it was like a it was like a, a campy view of 1950s purity mm. and that kind of cracks me up yeah i was like well i can't do that anymore i'm gonna get married but I could fool around with my cousin until then. And, you know, all these different things. Yeah. And even later when she's talking with Maximus, you know, just, just flippantly, um, well, because they're, they're in quarantine, they're waiting, you know? Yeah. She goes, you want to have, have sex? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? It just, there's only so much you can do in a vault though, I guess. I mean, it looked like a decent like community, but there's, there's only a certain amount of people. There's, a, there's not a lot to do apart from work, I guess. So why not? No, your your options would be thusly limited, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. To play Monopoly for the 500th time, or... I will say that, like, the introduction for Maximus was a, a very, I would say, soft landing for me, because I didn't think much of him or his character in that beginning. Uh, and he definitely grew on me throughout the show. Yeah. He's a very interesting character, to say the least, and the, like, the, kind of like the development that he goes through over the show. But that first episode was like... Why are we paying attention to this guy at first? <laughs> yeah, because he, in the you're right, because in the very beginning, he's so overlookable. Mm. He's just there's not much to him or about him where it drew my attention or made me want to stay focused on him as to why I should be paying attention to him. And honestly, I thought the story was going to be more about Dane than it was going to be about Maximus. Um, I thought it was going to be, you know, the, leading yeah. up to that, up until that whole that whole shift there. I thought that they were just introducing Maximus to introduce Dane. I thought that's the way this was going. I, I my shift on him changed over the, by the course of the episode, and actually by the end of the series, I find myself with Maximus feeling sorry for the kid because that kid's head is just a, you know, he's a, it's a bag of cats. Mm. I mean that that kid's head's all over the place. He doesn't know what to think, where to go, who's, you know, who to to be with, who to you know give his loyalty to his face gets smashed a lot too so yeah, true. it does yeah the money maker takes a few hits on he that must have multiple concussions <laughs> at least yeah i think i think maximus is my least favorite out of the the core people and i'm including um norm in this as well mm. like Ma- maximus just just a bit of a dick and he's been a, di- a bit of a dick for the whole thing i mean good characters can still be dicks don't get me wrong but it just there's something about him which didn't really hit for me in some places oh yeah legit he's a little weasley at times mm. you know and a little underhanded and um a bit spineless in a few spots i agree with all of that and uh he does he does get some redemptions a few times here and there but then he kind of backpedals and then redeems and then backpedals a little bit yeah. so it's like yeah all right, we'll see where you go, Maximus. We'll see where you end up in the end, uh, which we will find out next season, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. But I also want to get into a little bit of season two. I don't. I'm not going to go too hard, but I want to kind of touch on at least the the fact that we learn about this uh, professor who's raised this dog to be like his loyal companion. That but like it's his, like it's his dog. He keeps it secret from everyone else, and then he's got the secret technology that he hides in his neck and then you find out that 
the the brotherhood is after him more <laughs> modaver is after him uh and then the ghoul by some fate uh ends up going after him because yeah, he sees a bounty, bounty. right there was a yeah, bounty yeah. on him so the scientist who is like okay this guy is suddenly very important for some reason everybody's after him becomes this target and you get i love how that episode ends because it's that shocking moment for lucy to learn what it means to be in the wasteland especially like she first meets the doctor who tells him like you know you gotta adapt if you want to survive up here right and then that episode ends with him telling her to cut his head off with a saw he gave her <laughs> okie dokie yep. okie dokie okie dokie <laughs> She has to learn fast. I think she's a she is a quick learner. Like she said it in, I'm sure she said it in her little opening, intro. That she's a quick learner. She learns quick. That she has to decapitate a few frogs to get to get by in the wasteland. So, for the perspective of the player, as someone who's played the Fallout games, and I'm sure anyone else out there who's a big fan of the series, I feel like the show did a good job of kind of like adapting that sense of you were in this clean pristine vault with nothing that can really harm you and then once you get outside the vault you very quickly have to start drinking dirty water that gives you radiation poisoning you have to start killing people you have to start you know weighing options between morally gray choices and the games did that immediately like it was a constant thing that you had to deal with and i thought they did a good job of like giving us that in this show for me that was already like a high point in the series getting to that like i feel like i'm watching a game almost like yes it's a tv show but i felt like it was a very good adaptation even though the show is its own original story but to that point i mean you watching a game mm. you give credit where credit's due with the cinematography and how they played all this out because obviously clearly this is all cgi and and, and everything but the way that they did it it was so well done uh, to the and to my clearly untrained eyes, that I, I it was very believable as to that's actually where they were at and what you know the post apocalyptic. I, I know what I'm trying to say, post apocalyptic. There we go, wasteland of, of you know pa, you know yeah. after nuclear fallout, of what it would look like and how it, people might be and could be, and so they set the scene really well. So although I think they did a really good job with tying all that in, especially you know visually. I think because we are behind the curtain and we can we can see the gamifiedness of it. But like to someone who isn't a game fan, I don't think they would notice that it's a video game adaptation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it just made sense in the story for what the story that they wanted to tell. Yeah, I've actually read a couple of reviews from people on Amazon that were saying like, I guess this is based on a game like or people mm-hmm. just had no idea that it's based on a game. Yeah. And if they're able to watch it and enjoy it for what it is, that I think that speaks very highly to the show. Uh, much like like Last of Us kind of did a similar trick where a lot of people did, were yeah. like, oh, they need to make a game out of this. Like, uh, it's yeah. based on a game. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get similar stuff coming from this. Like, oh, they should make a game out of the show. Like, um, <laughs> That would make a really cool video game someday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to that credit, one of the things that I loved about this show and why I think it was such a great ad- adaptation was it did something that I, as a gamer, love to see when I see versions of video games in other medium. And that's where they properly utilize things that look and feel like it's from the game without saying like, oh, here's our version of that thing from that game, much like Yoshi in the Mario Brothers movie. Like... Mm. Yeah, uh, they're not going. Eh, uh, this, this. Do you remember this? Yeah. Do you, do you remember this? No, yeah, it's <laughs> close enough. The th- I geeked out quite a few times because a lot of times in the show you were seeing the items from the games. They were named mm-hmm. the same. They were boxed the same. They looked the same. The Pip Boy was fucking like spot on. Like the Pip Boy was yeah. pretty damn impressive that they had like yeah. fully functional working Pip Boys, or at least they made them look like they yeah. were fully functional. Right. And um, everything about the vaults look authentic. Everything looked like it was from the games. The items, the 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 things they were using, the the drugs, the chems, mm-hmm. everything was the same. So <laughs> right away, <laughs> yeah, everything, everything was the same. The monsters looked like they looked in the games. It wasn't some variation of like, oh, this is what we are gonna tell you as a rad roach. 
you know, or, yeah. you know, what the ghouls are. Everything, like they said, it's canon. So it's the same, which I really appreciate because I can't tell you how many times, like, especially with old video game movies that were like just god awful. <laughs> Some of the worst stuff. I'm thinking more like yeah. Resident Evil, which I, I love the Resident Evil movies, but God, they're terrible adaptations. And then you've got like just a swath of like ooey bowl garbage movies silent hill wasn't bad silent hill did pretty decent but it still did its own thing i was thinking right. about the start of super mario brothers movie with the goombas that's yeah. what i was the thinking. goombas are eight feet tall it's like yeah with a really small head <laughs> like okay Sh- sure overall like I, I i really enjoyed a lot of that from the show that it was very authentic and that's what made me like okay this is how it should be done I don't want to go too hard into each episode. So I no. think this is, I'll go ahead and move us on into like talking about more of our favorite moments from the sure. show. Uh, Ian, you already kind of touched on yours, but so I'll throw it to Tim to do his, and then we can come back to you again, Ian, if you want to go into more detail. So sure. Tim, what's some of your, at least one of your favorite moments from this show. So we already kind of touched on it a little bit, but I do the 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 conversations about sex and the views of sex in this show uh, really did amuse me greatly. And the whole conversation in the uh, lockdown between Lucy and Maximus, when she was like, just very flippantly, so you want to have sex? And he's like, oh, right. And the way he describes his own, he's like, you want to use my cock? And the way he describes it, and he's like, it goes big like a pimple, then it explodes. And he's just like, I'm just, you know, he seemed very uncomfortable with the whole idea and just, and she's like, well, yes, it should do that every time. It's quite normal. And like, she was educating him about his, own, it, that whole, that I had to pause it. I was laughing so hard <laughs> by the end of that, because I was just like, well, then there was a coughing fit attached to that as well. But, you know, I'm just getting over a head and chest cold, but I was watching that and I started laughing and then I started coughing and then I laughed some more than I coughed some more. anyway. So it required a pause that. And the use of the word, uh, the phrase okie dokie at all these weird and awkward situations, like when in episode two, where she goes to cut off Will Zig's head and she's just like, okie dokie, like this is what she's going to do. And, you know, she's got a, she's got a, she's, you know, trying to escape the, the body shop. Okie dokie. This is what we're, you know, she's going to go hang now with the ghoul. Okie dokie. You know, yeah. it's just all these different things. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I did. I, I just. I enjoy those. The the little the little things about the show. I think are the most. Uh, you know, the between the cameos and uh, there's just some of these little these little things that things that I recognize the the fifties Americana in the game, bringing mm-hmm. back that essence into the game, and and all these different little things. What um, were some of the cameos? Um, Michael Rappaport, first off, yeah. uh, was the uh, uh, Knight Titus. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I didn't and, pick up, but that was him. Yeah, I didn't either until they he pulled up his because they had the voice modifier on. Yeah. As soon as they pulled up his and showed his face, and he started cursing like a sailor, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's Michael Rappaport! That's awesome!" Mm-hmm. And I, so I was kind of hoping that his character was going to stick around a little bit longer. Um, he didn't. Mm-hmm. He he got the dead, and uh, so that was one of them. Um, Matt uh, Berry. <laughs> Yeah, Matt no. Barry's in it. Barry, um, yeah. Which one yeah. was Matt Barry? Uh, he was the 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 cutting robot in the yeah. In the body. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yep. So he's like, the I guy from the like, IT I... crowd. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so now I now I hear my voice every time I walk into my own home, and um, <laughs> I thought that was pretty entertaining. Um, yeah, yeah. That was in the past, uh, wasn't it, with um, Cooper? Chris. Yeah, and Chris Parnell. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Parnell was the one-eyed guy. It's always here. Fallout Four. In, uh, yeah, Fallout yeah. Four. Four. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There was a couple more. Yeah, um, Michael Emerson, oh, but I suppose <laughs> uh, Maddie. Ma- uh, what is it? Cardopel. Cardopel. Um, you know him if you see him, but he he's one of the, he played one of the guys at the body shop in episode like three or four. Okay, one of the, like, the guys on the couch. couch. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the guys on the couch. He's and a, uh, he, he was he one of the people in uh, Lemony Snicket's uh, series of fortune yes. events TV show. Yeah. Yes, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, <laughs> that and he's also in Free Guy, where he's like, you know, 
starts yelling at his mom not to play with his special sock. <laughs> yeah. So that's my special sock. Leave it alone, mom. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, so he's in it, and yeah, there's just a lot of really good cameos that are are well done, even if they're, even if they're just in there for the the one episode, like uh, Maddie Cardropel or uh, or um, uh, the other guy whose name I already forgot. I, I feel like Chris Parnell so. had to be that overseer. Like I expect no one else to play that character other than Chris Parnell. Well, he's it was perfect so perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, he. You know, because honestly, hit the the. The overseer number four reminded me of the doctor he played. Uh, it was it on Thirty Rock? Mm. Yeah, yeah, Doctor Spaceman. Doctor Spaceman, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Spichemin. <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah, Vault, um, Vault Four was a highlight for me in general. That was just a weird, like Vault, that's whole thing about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just because you'd, you'd already seen the the backstory of a Vault Four. Um, with it being like overseen by scientists. And so you know that something's gone wrong as as soon as you go in when there's weirdos. Like, dude, I remember like having noses on their foreheads. Yeah. And, I had that moment know, too because we see the flashback with Walter Goggins' character where he does mm-hmm. the, the commercial with uh, Vault 4 in it. And yeah. the scientists are talking about like living in, among scientists and like doing the thing to help, you know, save humanity. And then as soon as you realize that lucy and maximus are in vault for you're like oh that's the one that uh mm. howard was doing the commercial for and then as you start seeing like oh this place is wrong something's not right and then when they show that hollow tape to lucy of what happened to the original scientist and, and then like chris parnell was like well the creature in that hollow tape was like my great great uncle <laughs> half removed or something and it was like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think he said it was his uncle phil yeah <laughs> I love the dark humor and the satire in the show. Yeah. And that's something that I feel like some people might not understand going into this, that it's absolutely satire and dark humor. Oh, yeah. And this- the dark humor in the show is on point. Absolutely yeah. on point. In the, the end of that episode where they send her away with with loads of food and oh, the care package management. Yeah. She thinks she's going to get killed. He's got the, he's holding up the, you know, he's like, yeah. he's going to cut her head off. Then he's like trying to cut the, He's great. trying to cut the. He's like, we should really get this sharpened. Oh. I'm just like, this is fantastic. Yeah, the writing is on this show is just, yeah, great. Yeah. And like, uh, I was talking to Brandy about this, who unfortunately couldn't do this episode with us because we were breaking down a lot of like the political drama that's happening within the show that leads into the satire of itself. Because the whole premise of Fallout is. This is something that could have possibly happened, you know, depending on how history played out. And right. if mm-hmm. after World War II, you know, if the powers that be didn't kind of calm down and then pursued like a nuclear war, this very well could have happened. Not to mention mm-hmm. there's the corporate greed of vault Tech. They were basically making it happen. So they were, as we learn in the show in the later episodes, vault Tech basically started the war to sell vaults. <laughs> essentially yeah. um and it's just a bunch of rich powerful people fucking the world for their own gain so just uh the terrible world created by terrible people <laughs> yep um i wanted to say too like i actually one of my favorite scenes in the show was the part with the codsworth robot the butcher shop uh robot <laughs> And just his dialogue and how funny that was is when like she walks in and goes, what the fudge? And he goes, there's no fudge here. Like very matter of factly. <laughs> right. And then right. The, the whole like lulling her into the sense of security of like her telling him what happened out in the wilds. And he's like, oh, that's terrible. No, I can't believe that. I was afraid I was going to be a sex slave. He goes, oh, that's no, oh, that will never that's happen. That's we your organs. We're just going to harvest your organs. Like, ah, uh. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. That's what the wasteland does. <laughs> yeah. That's what it does. Uh, I know Fred you, Armisen. Sorry. Oh yeah, Fred Armisen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Fred Armisen, the DJ. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a cameo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That all was one that was very all the time. obvious to me, and I forgot. Yeah. All fiddles all the, fiddles. All the time. All the fiddles all the time. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> and like that, that little lecture that he had with um, Thaddeus about the highs, mids, and lows, and the guy's like, yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that kid was from uh, was it Super Superstore? I think it was. Was it? The I've show was like that. like it was like a Walmart. Like I know of the show. show. 
yeah, mm-hmm. he's in that. And he plays like a, a, you know, thinks he's like a gangster kind of <laughs> kid, and just he plays it really well. He's just yeah, it's very <laughs> funny. And so as soon as I saw him on this one, I was like, oh yeah, it's that kid from Superstore. Yeah, I've already hit on um, Vault Four and uh, and the the intro to the Ghoul. Um, but that that uh, the the first convergence moment of where everyone's in the same place in Philly, where it gets uber violent <laughs> really quickly. Um, Michael Emerson, shockingly so. <laughs> Michael Emerson's leg gets t- blown the fuck off, and then. And then wackiness ensues. Uh, Ma- Maximus comes on in, in, in his uh, uh, his armor tr- to try and save people, I guess. Um, and it, it, that convergence moment just made me like. It felt like I, I have this 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 love of TV shows where everything's disparate until it's not, and. It just coincidentally, everyone ends up in the same place for like a common purpose, and that that's what it felt like to me. And, and it was only like the, the third episode, but that and then, and I know they go off in their own directions as well afterwards. But it just felt just felt right. It just felt like <laughs> something special happened in Philly. Yeah, that scene was yeah. really cool. I was actually gonna bring that up and ask about like how you guys felt about the like shocking violence <laughs> that ensued during that scene. It was a little rough at first because I was like, well, I mean, I knew that there was going to be some level of violence. I mean, that's just the kind of what goes along with the game as well. I mean, it's just, you know, there's some blood and gore in the game. And so I expected to see some blood and gore in the TV show. I was not expecting to see Will Zig's leg get shot off just because. And I was like, oh, my God. And then, you know, the all out, you know, uh, gunfight that I mean, and that the ghoul's weapon. Mm. Holy crap! That yep. gun—that's not putting little holes in people. That was putting. I love the iconic sound that it made too, with like the thump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was ridiculous. Um, when he would hit somebody with that, I was like, "Yeah, they're dead. They're done." Um, yeah, that that was that. It just kind of took me back for a couple seconds, and then I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, but the indifference also of the of the people around who weren't exactly <laughs> involved in the gunfight, who were just kind of like laying back to it. Like the lady, the the lady or or man, I don't know what it was, but the the person in the back of the shop, um, just sitting there eating their beans, you know, <laughs> when they need to come get a new leg for Wilzig, and they're like, I'm trying to eat my beans. Like, like they couldn't be bothered. Everything is blowing the hell up less than 20 feet away from them. And they're like, no, 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 I'm eating my beans. Mm. Leave me be again. The humor. I, yeah. love it. I, I love that scene a lot. Actually. I thought it was great. I mean, I kind of love high violence like that. And like just watching people's heads explode to me is a good time. I'm one of those people though, who I pl- I've been playing violent video games for a long time. So I'm kind of desensitized yeah. to it. So I'm like, yeah, make it rain with brains. <laughs> uh, I understand it's a bit jarring for some people. That was probably a little off putting. Probably the worst part of that scene, which was hard for Brandy was watching the dog get stabbed. And she was like, you yeah. motherfucker. Agreed. And I'm like, the Agreed. dog's going to be fine. She was like, how do you know? I'm like, I just know like the dog's too important to just kill off. And especially because like we've learned like no body, no death kind of thing. Once the dog got stabbed, the dog yeah. is out of focus for the entire rest of the scene right. until it comes back. And you're like, oh yeah, the dog and the ghoul heals the dog. See, so yeah. I was like, you see, it's all right. So we're good. Yeah. When they healed the dog, I was like, yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. <laughs> healed the dog. We're about to it's hate on your coming. character real hard. <laughs> Exactly. Walter Goggins. Um, earlier we were don't talking. Don't make don't make me dislike you, like, Walter. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I remember too, as we were talking, that I really enjoyed was that scene when Thaddeus and Maximus were fighting the the grabber or gobbler thing. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. like that whole scene and just the chaos and the way the music picks up, like do 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 do, and like the dude screaming as he's getting like pulled into the gobbler's mouth, and then just the a giant explosion of its stomach like blown out and just blah and they're like they have that little like party like yeah <laughs> it was just so goofy and silly and i loved it was anybody else weirded out by the fact that when they showed the inside of its mouth that it was all fingers, fingers. oh yeah yeah it was, it was disgusting it was yeah not i was good. like 
I mean, they did I, say I did like, did it was like, the, a, like a genetic dog. experiment. <laughs> right. I did like the dog, you know, hearing the high pitch whistle kind of tilted my head a little bit, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. in, in terms of like the, the Thaddeus uh, of, of your old, like, how stupid are those massive backpacks the squires mm. have? So over Great. the top. It, ma- it makes sense why you can pick up so much in, in Fallout uh, and then not be able to carry anything anymore. But still, it's just massive. They were stupid. They couldn't, they couldn't catch up. It's barely. Can- it reminded me of a combination of like golf caddies with mm. um, like Monty Python with the, the king and his squire following <laughs> him kind of thing. <laughs> like he just needs some nice. coconuts. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, yeah. Well, especially when they're going into the fight, and you, you know you've got the you've got the the mech rocking in front, and they're all like w- behind, all like hand on hand, mm-hmm. like you, know, you see yeah. a lot of military movies where they they'll go into a building. Military. Connect. Yeah, but that still kind of amused me because I was like, all right, once the mech goes goes away, y'all are screwed because <laughs> you got no armor and there's no helmets, there's no nothing. They're just and they're with like a blaster. I appreciated the ending and the mm. little about face of the ending um, where everyone you thought was good was bad and everyone who's bad is good. <laughs> um, I appreciated that. It, it, I didn't, for at least nice six of the episodes, I, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get that was, that was going to happen, mm. um, which is very surprising. Well, me. we can kind of like wrap that up into our like overall like impressions yeah. of the show too, with like how the ending worked yeah. and stuff. Uh, I did want to just touch on a few things about how the show relates to the games a bit because I think they did a pretty good job of kind of like borrowing a little bit from the narratives of the games because the that the plot line with Lucy going after her father is very similar to Fallout Three because that's actually. Fallout Three's plot line essentially is: you were born in a vault. Your dad is this like very popular, famous scientist, and then mysteriously he leaves the vault, and you don't know why. And then you have to go looking for him out in the wasteland. Um, and okay. then there are other bits that borrow from like Fallout Four, like the dog. Clearly, Dog Me is mm-hmm. straight from Fallout Four, and he's a, a big companion character within that game. And then um, we also have like the New California Republic, which is straight from Fallout New Vegas. And then we even see New Vegas at the very end. The closing shot of the show was New Vegas, which I actually had to like take a moment because we were like, where is this? What is this? And there was the giant tower, which at first looks like the Space Needle. But then it was yeah, like, right. but it wouldn't make sense for Hank to go to Seattle, not to mention it was surrounded by desert and mountains. Mm-hmm. So I had to actually do a little bit of Googling to see, you know, does New, does Vegas have a tower? And it it's- does. <laughs> it, it says it in in the credit sequence of each show. It t- shows you an important location True. in the next episode, and there was a sign for New Vegas right yeah. on the on the in the oh, credit okay. sequence. Well, that's of, of extra confirmation. Show. I just I literally <laughs> looked up the tower in Vegas, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that tower. <laughs> well, yeah, so. see, because when I saw the 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 Space Needle thing, I assumed it was Seattle, and mm-hmm. I was like, well. You know, they're not that far from a high desert in Yakima in Seattle. And after a nuclear fallout, it can it can change the landscape and all those different things. I thought, well, maybe it is Seattle, but that actually makes more sense. Yeah. It, so, it, yeah. Seattle, of course, is a lot farther away from L.A. than Vegas is. And I, I was like, there's no way Hank just ran to Vegas or to all the way to <laughs> Seattle. So, yeah, no, but extra proof then, too, that it did show yeah. the sign with. So I, I first noticed it on the like two episodes before where it showed the like the the fiddling mm. um radio shack in the credits of the the one where we hadn't even got there yet um yeah so yeah it, it, there's definitely a sign for saying new vegas here yeah okay so they're doing a good job of incorporating everything and again like you know giving them credit that everything is kind of canon and it's tying into things i know there is a little bit of discourse amongst fans for new vegas that what the show is doing kind of hurts the original narrative of new Vegas, but that's kind of beyond me and how it ties in. As far as I know, it kind of makes sense. But then again, I haven't really played new Vegas. So if that's something that upsets you, tell us in the comments, let us know mm-hmm. <laughs> if that's a thing you're bothered right, yeah. by, but that the fact that shady shores was blown up and now, you know, the whole shady thing Sands. with vault Sorry. shady sands. Shady. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then fall uh, the vault four was like a bunch of their refugees essentially. Mm-hmm. So let us know. Tell us what should have been done there. 
let's uh, let us move on uh, to a quick wrap up. I'm going to do this the least favorite moments quick because I know everyone's got kind of mutual feelings on a particular subject. The the puppy burning. The puppy burning. <laughs> don't burn puppies. I don't care if it's a show. I don't care if you're mulching them. I don't care if it's going to give you energy or, or fertilizer or whatever. Don't burn puppies. But how are we don't supposed to puppies. know how evil they are? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You don't burn puppies. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I obviously wasn't a very a big fan of that either. And it was funny because Brandy hates any animal violence whatsoever in mm-hmm. any medium. So like I literally like as that happened where you watch this fucker put a puppy into a furnace. Yeah. I literally turned to Brandy and went bye, expecting her to just be like, I'm done. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> And done. Done. But you look at that. I got a thing to go catch. Yeah. yeah. I, I also got a message off uh, Tom. Shut up, Tom, as 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 he's well known. Uh, and he said, fuck burning puppies, please. Yeah, that part wasn't the best. That was a little rough. I mean, granted, we're seeing sh- terrible shit throughout the show. And we're we get it that there's a lot of horrible people in this setting. And it's it's only going to get worse we probably could have done without the actual physical showing Mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that there's enough other things that you find out about vault tech and what they did and how they did and and leaning up to the end of this first season that I don't think you needed to have the actual act of putting a puppy in the fire. I think it could have just been like, you know, alluded to it could have been like an x on a chalkboard that said dispose or something right right Mm -hmm. yeah that's what i mean it's something that alluded to that the 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 puppies were done away with but showing them was it was a little much for me so if i have one complaint about the series i think that's probably it i don't really have i don't really have anything else to hang my hat on as to you know what i didn't like about the series hated hated the burning puppies (laughs) Now, Ian, you put something in about the music in your notes. What did you mean by that? I, let me put it like this: like I, the music was was great in a way. It was it was well done in the way that it it was implemented, um, and it was and they were good songs and everything. Um, what what the music did do is take me away from what I was watching on screen, mm. and a lot of, because there was such a disconnect between what's going on in the screen to the music sometimes it just it didn't fit it, it didn't fit and it and that's the vibe of fallout and i get that i mean <laughs> that's a lot of the satire too the way the music <laughs> yeah counters so you mean like during some of the harder darker scenes and then they have this cheery upbeat music yeah and and, and that's not necessarily a, a bad thing in, in all circumstances it just the, the things that get me and to well the get, things that get me to to cry and feel emotion is good accompanying music to things. The the only things that ever make me cry is is a death with a really good like backing track, hard like hitting, emotional, emotional. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. pour your heart out type stuff, and that, that sure. gets me. But it's just it, it just took me out of it. Like I don't think their intention was to make you cry at all in the show, though. No, <laughs> no. I mean, but, uh, yeah. Sometimes it just felt a bit. The, the choice of, of even maybe there was a different choice of 50s music that they could have used in a certain place, which, which might have kept me in the scene rather than listen to music or watching the scene. Mm-hmm. I think it's a valid think, take, though. I think a lot of the music, though, that I heard during the show, I mean, I'm not a 50s musical expert, but a lot of it felt like it was made for the, the show itself, you know, in the vibe of that era. Yeah, I'd have to check the credits. Songs, yeah, I know some of them yeah, are legit I mean, songs. I don't know if all of them are. Yeah, I mean, there was there's quite a few of them that were, you know, uh, was straight up classics, but, you know, uh, but some of them where I was like, I don't think I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a Fallout original. Mm. So, I mean, like for me as a Fallout Three fan, that that's the one I played the most of. I loved the closing to Episode Two, where we were talking about like uh, Lucy having to cut the dude's head off, and she does the okie dokie. And when it cuts the mm-hmm. credits, it plays the song that I associate Fallout with, and that's the like, I don't want to set the world on fire, I just want to set your heart ablaze or something. Like that's yeah. the song that's burned into my brain from playing Fallout Three back in the day so i was like oh perfect like it was like the right 
exact moment. <laughs> I like the music for the most part, but I understand that it could be like off putting or offsetting. There's a few times where I feel like the music was there more for the lyrics and not the actual tune. Yeah. So yeah. Or for the setting. It was just, yeah. Yeah. Something tied in. Yeah. I, I think I'm probably in, in the minority in fine and feeling that <laughs> just judging by chatter, but all good. Yeah. Well, like with that, let's move on to our rating of the season for the fallout. It's it's dropped like a big fat nuclear bomb. We've blasted through this first season of fallout. Let's do our overall take and score out of 10. What you thought of the entire season of follow uh so as i said in the notes it's a very solid nine out of ten perhaps even a 9.5 i was hooked from the very first episode i wanted to keep watching you know so on the one hand i was very glad that you know they all the episodes were dropped because i wanted to watch them back to back to back and i wanted to you know uh, and at the end of the season i wanted more you know, I wanted to see what was going to happen next and where they were going and, and, you know, what, you know, how they were going to catch up with, um, you know, uh, Lucy's dad, Hank, and what was going on, what, what, what was going to happen with that. Uh, especially now that, you know, uh, Moldaver had the, the cold fusion and she was able to light up the town and, you know, and all this different stuff. So I was very curious about all that. Um, probably not giving it a full 10 just because of the puppy burning uh so that that's going to knock it down a little bit but uh you know not enough to get it out of the nines that's for sure it, it just the, the series is so well written and so well put together uh both visually and everything else it's just it's really well done uh yeah i i just i can't i don't have enough good things to say about it even though i don't have a full like deep you know, knowledge of, you know, all this fallout stuff. Well, that's a point um, in and of itself, your yeah. perspective as a person who's not someone who's played the games. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel the need to have that, that knowledge of that, of the background and the lore that's of good. all the rest of the fallout. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. I felt like I was able to sit down, watch the show. And although uh, it may not be, uh, you know, step for step with what's in the games, I think it helps you feel like you kind of understand what goes on in the games and, and everything else. My buddy, John, who is a huge fallout guy. He's like, yeah, uh, he watched the first couple episodes and he's like 10 out of 10. They're nailing it. This is perfect. His wife messaged me today and she's like, she's like, yeah, uh, this is even better than the last of us. Amazon's killing it. I'm, I'm, I'm on the same wavelength, Tim. I'm on the same wavelength. Feeling I'm it. feeling it. Feeling it. Feeling the, feeling the reds. Feeling the oh yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we're going. I, I'm going for a nine out of ten as well. Um, just again, like just little things really that 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 annoyed me a, a little bit. The puppy burning, obviously being one of them. I the the amount of times I've said puppy burning in in this last five minutes just makes my heart sink. Um, a little, bit of, uh, of puppy Bernie. <laughs> a, a little bit of the music and stuff but e echoing you tim again um and like it didn't matter uh, that i didn't know anything about the games I, I i knew enough to see a couple of references here and there but it didn't matter um so uh, to the point where i'm trying to get my mum to watch it and my mum was really off put by the word video game adaptation because mm. she's like, I, I don't know anything about the video game. I don't, don't, I don't want to watch this. It's going to be rubbish because video game adaptation. And I'm just saying, you don't need to know anything about the games. It tells you everything. Mm -hmm. you, you're immersed in the world straight away. It's got Walt and Goggins in it. <laughs> and he was Boyd Crowder. Um, so I think you'll like it. And she's watched the first couple of episodes and she's loving it. So I, I think it's good for newcomers to get into the world. And you don't have to play the games afterwards. It's just really good for, I don't know, the IP. You do loads of stuff with it. Yeah, I think it does a good job for that specifically, where it's like it might get people to be like, now I'm curious about the games and there's a good chance they're going to mm. go play it. And we already know player numbers are spiking with people 
checking the, sh- the games out now with the show. Um, yep. I'm going to piggyback right off of you guys. I'm also landing on a really firm like 9, 9.5. Like it depends. We don't really have a set amount, but it's, it's yeah. damn near perfect in a lot of ways. And I think, Tim, you yeah. said it's better than The Last of Us. And I think that's extremely high praise because The Last of Us did so many things right, but then so many things not great that like there's the things I loved about The Last of Us. I love that they went deeper into the narrative. I love that they explored certain things a bit. But yep. then where they completely were like, we're going to make things completely different. is like, ah, you, you kind of fucked the pooch on that one. Obviously, Fallout being an established IP, but with an original narrative, they have a little bit more flexibility. But they delivered it so well and so perfectly. Like you said, your friend who plays Fallout was like, this is perfect. Because yep. even though it's an original story, the setting feels right. The characters look right. The characters feel right. The music feels right. Everything matches with what you expect within the games. And that's where like within the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of watching the first episode with all the vault action in the beginning, I was like, this is so spot on. This is yeah. like already in my mind. This is the best video game adaptation I've ever seen. And I think that's a great thing that we have this now in this in this age of like video game adaptations were just so bad and like it was so hard for people to translate them into the other mediums and they're doing such a good job with Fallout because TV is the best way to do a video game adaptation. It's so much harder to squeeze things into a movie for an hour and a half, two hours. <coughs> Uncharted. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a good bad video game reference mm-hmm. movie yeah. uh but yeah i i really enjoyed the show i love the characters overall i love the way the story was playing out it felt familiar but different um mm-hmm. the, the the satire the humor like there was a good couple of times where yeah, i kind of like puckered a little bit and like kind of getting on the edge of my seat not really knowing what was going to happen um Obviously, it does, it does have its low points with a few things, but for the most part, the writing really carries it through. I felt like the last episode had a really good highs, but also some poor lows, uh, especially with the ending with like Lucy talking to her dad. I felt like that dragged on a little too much. But overall, I liked the that big epic finale that has yeah. like the cold fusion reactor gets activated and you see all of L.A. light up and everybody's like, oh, shit. Not to mention just the overall megaton bomb of this was all Vault-Tex doing. Our whole world yeah. was fucked yeah. <laughs> by them, essentially, and the powers that be. And I want to say I loved the flashbacks uh, of oh, everything yeah. to do with Walter Goggins' character in the past. I love oh, yeah. all of it that. It helps at the scene so well. Oh, it was so good. I love the, the comparison and how, like, people, like... I said this to Brandy offline, like the, the culture of the world essentially stopped when the drop bombs dropped. So people are trapped like living in the style of 1950s because just culture ceased to happen yeah. after that. That's why there's yeah. the music. That's why there's the haircuts. That's why there's the, the style of clothing, the style of food, just everything gets like time capsuled. But I really enjoyed it all around. Absolutely. It was very good. Um, and if you didn't like the show, either you were didn't like the violence or you didn't understand it, it was satire, because I know that happens. People don't understand satire sometimes and they get kind of anti whatever something's doing. But there are actually a, a group, there are a pretty significant number of people out there who are unhappy with this show mm. because it's because. I, I, and I did not know that these people existed, but there are fallout purists apparently. Um, and it's not their fallout. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And I thought only star Wars fans complained like this, but you know, um, Halo yeah, had that it, too. When Halo launched, they're like, yeah. that's not my master chief kind of thing. Yeah. That <laughs> kind of thing. And so it's the same kind of thing. Same kind of vibe I'm getting, uh, is the same, the people who complained about Halo. Are the same people who are complaining about Fallout yeah. who complain about you know some. I feel other like things. that's also the kind of people who like get butt hurt when games become multi-platform. They're like, yeah. "That's my game. You can't have it." Like, yeah. Wh- why? Why can't they? Why can it not be open to more people? But to everybody experience? play and have fun. More just, people play with. Yeah, absolutely. Just pretend. Like it, it, it pretend it doesn't exist. Like, 
I, I pretend that Rocky Five doesn't exist. So <laughs> just watch. Pretend it doesn't exist. I, I pretend like whole sections of Phantom Menace and Episode Two, Attack of the Clones, don't exist. So I understand. <laughs> uh, to, to, before we go. <laughs> Before we close this out, uh, I wanted to throw out just some quick like, you know, where do we think the show's going to go? Because we do know the show's already been approved or greenlit for a season two, which I feel like let's that, go. Like, more. I feel like that news broke before the show even hit Amazon. Yeah. Like yeah. before it went live, we learned that they were going to do a season two. So they must have gotten some really good numbers. Anyways, um, the ending of the show was pretty damn good and it left things very open. They, they definitely did a good job of setting themselves up because I hate when shows are like, we don't know if we're going to get renewed. So we have to like tie most of the little bows together. So yeah. we have some sense of conclusion. And it's, I hate when that happens. Oh, no, this is wide open. There's so it. many angles. There's so many directions this can go. I mean, yeah, it could be a whole nother season before we even see Hank again. Mm -hmm. Season two could have nothing to do with Hank. It could focus on on the ghouls travels and with Lucy and and you know and dog meat there's just the three of them and what they're doing uh and then with some maximus kind of sparsed in here and there with just yeah. some hints at what hank's doing mm -hmm. it could be a whole season again and, and i actually i'd be okay with that mm -hmm. because there's enough other story to figure out what's going on because there's other players uh from uh uh not not like actual players but players to the the whole vault tech system that are are I'm sure are out there somewhere somehow that have to be held accountable, oh, yeah. you know, trying to find, trying to find uh, the ghoul's family. I mean, I where's would, his wife? Where's his daughter? I'm kind of curious about all that. I would be shocked if they don't find another fucked up vault somewhere in the middle of on their way to wherever they're going. They said there were hundreds. So, yeah. I mean, we've only, we've only seen four of them. We've seen 31, 32, 33, and four. I mean, if they continue like East, in the series mm -hmm. they could hit vaults from the games too because like we saw the closing shot is in new vegas so yeah. there could be some crossover there could be some story overlapping yeah. going on there they could bring in characters from the games and they could keep going east with the show and mm -hmm. make their way through vaults that are in the games uh i really want to know what happened with norm and the little uh but but the brain, brain box, the, the brain bud the little the little brain bubble yeah, yeah, I th yeah. actually I was gonna mention that I would love that the, 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 the brain bubble and him like hold, like I'm gonna get you and then he just like crashes like, don't could go anywhere please hold still, still. <laughs> I love that I'm going to stick you with this could you please hold still <laughs> no don't please go in there moving. don't go in there yeah. oh he's gone in there <laughs> oh he's going in there don't turn the light on oh we turn the light on <laughs> I love that part that was some of the best <laughs> funny humor there. Um, so there's the you new know, you could make theories of where the show might go based on the video games, especially with the closing shot of New Vegas. Uh, I agree with you, Tim, that I would love for them to just spend a little bit more time with the characters. And mm -hmm. that also hits on like my feelings with Maximus were still kind of like meh. The closing bit with him where Dane said, Oh, you killed the leader of the 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 group we were after. And he's like, no, don't do it. And then she like holds his hand up and like, you know, night Maximus, night Maximus. And at first I was like, oh, that doesn't feel good. But then I realized if he's a knight now and he can start leading the brotherhood, that opens up a lot of opportunities of where they could go with the story, yeah. with the brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, Ooh, okay, okay. And it okay. kind of okay. kicked that whole door wide open again because it was kind of closed there for a little while mm. as to what Maximus could or couldn't do. Um. And even the fact that the the cleric for the the Brotherhood of Steel was willing to overlook anything that Maximus had done before, and he's like, "Just stay here with me, and we'll build this. You know, you'll be my sword. I'll be the." He said, "The head." Yeah, the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, and you can the be my sword. Sort of respected him for the guile that he had for to to do what it took to to survive and thrive. Yeah, yeah, Maximus. Do you have any um, yeah. hopes or thoughts or theories, Ian? I want to see the end of the Enclave so that they can fuck off burning Stop puppies. Stop burning puppies. I want to see more of the en 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 uh, the Enclave as well, because basically we we only saw them in that yeah that one sequence with the training of dog meat doing the, the bounties. Well, yeah, they, they were pretty anonymous for, for most of it, and that's a major faction that has been established and then sort of left to one side for a later season it looks like True. yeah they kind of like just kind of glazed over the enclave altogether 
but that's mm-hmm. fair, especially that's if fine, they fine. if they're planning they this to, outright. You they know, had a lot to do to to do the rest of yeah. What there's too much, too many cooks at some point. Sorry, yeah, that's a, that's another. Well, yeah, but I'm agreeing with you that there's too many tropes when you come to adaptations, but they got to cram a lot of stuff into a really mm-hmm. short period of time. It's kind of my issue that I've been having with Halo is they're going too fast, and I'm like, slow down, slow down, back up, back up. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> takes take time to let it breathe and explore yeah. things so i'm glad that it feels like they're doing it right there's a lot of lore to get into uh when we're gonna get that next season i don't know but they should make it weekly episodes that was oh, something we all agreed sure. on absolutely that it was oh, a mistake sure. that they dropped all of it at once uh oh, for sure yeah. i mean i guess they wouldn't have known that it would it would have hit so well but you got, you got to have something, some sort of like yeah. feeling that it's going to be at the talk of the town for a bit. Like that first episode, it was now and a quarter, and, it, and there's so much to talk about that. But we 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 couldn't we can't cover it all because we've only got an hour after the series. Really, we, we that could have keep, kept us going for a full week, a hundred percent. Yeah, and it's it's kind of annoying that. Maybe in like three or four weeks, then no one's really be going to be talking about Fallout yeah. anymore. I think a lot of the episodes ended on great cliffhangers too. Yeah. That it's like, oh, yeah. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next episode, rather than just like skip next episode, mm-hmm. instant gratification. You know, especially the closing shot of episode, I want to say six, when it ends with Norm going into Vault Thirty One, and you don't yeah. know what he sees, and you're like, what is it? What does he see? You know? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I I think that they 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 really did screw the pooch here because you had an opportunity for this great PR wave for at least two to three months of PR Mm -hmm. for this this series. So instead, we're going to get a very short and tight, like like Ian said, a very short and tight uh, PR window. We're in a couple weeks. People will not be talking about this, Mm. which is a shame. Because this series is so good and it deserves to have PR buzz around. And the next time we're probably only going to hear anything about it is when it comes time for award season. And some of these, I think you're going to see this show win a few awards. Um, I'd be surprised if it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And, And so... Uh, I'm hoping that Amazon watches this, uh, you know, because it's, this is a, a joint thing with MGM that hopefully, and with them, with Sadie and everybody guy and goes, you know what, this next season, let's put it out episodically. Let's put it out one at a time. Let's stretch this out. Let's get the PR from it. Let's do all the things, um, you know, because not only that, uh, you had to watch a commercial to get into the episode. Mm-hmm. They can they can get more money for you know sponsorships, all these different mm-hmm. things, because that's what you know these things are all built around. But you know, I'm just looking at it going. Y- you had a great show; it's phenomenal. I'm on the one hand, I'm so very glad that it was dropped at like the atomic bomb, and just everything was just there for me to yeah. just binge watch because of my head cold the last couple of days, and so I was just able to just to sit down and watch it. On the other hand, now I'm sitting here kind of going, so uh, what do I watch now? Yeah. You know, I, you know there's, think, there's not the think, excitement buildup. Think about us at Couch Soup. I'm watching now podcast, for example. Like, we've got, ten, what, 10 hours of content more on Halo this year? And this, I'm guessing, is the superior show out of the, out of the two. And we're going to have... Maybe an hour and a quarter, a quarter, maybe an hour and a half of content on this show, which was which is so much better, and there's so much more to talk about mm-hmm. in my head anyway. I didn't watch Halo, sorry. Um, so it, it it's just a bit of a shame. It's just a yeah. bit of a shame. Agreed. I I wonder if something happened with Amazon where they were getting burned on their episodic weekly drops because most of their shows have been episodic, yeah. like. Rings of Power was episodic. Uh, the Boys is, the episode, boys is episodic. Episode. Mm-hmm. Gen V was episodic. What happened? Invincible is weird. Yeah, Invincible. Yeah. Thing. But what happened that I'm they suddenly really sure decided why, why to this just... Was, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There, was, there was no indication given as to why all of a sudden now they were like, okay, so this one we're just going to put it all out there. We're going to Netflix this. Mm. 
which I hated that they did that with Stranger Things, you know, Netflix. And, like, and, you know, I'm trying to think if there's any other competition right now, too, because like of the other big shows I'm watching right now, I'm watching Shogun and I'm watching X-Men yeah. 97. But I wouldn't call that direct competition to Fallout, though. Yeah. The only thing that I can think of is maybe the worried about the tail and when 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 House of the Dragon starts. Mm -hmm. But even at that, it's, if they had done it right, right at the end, though, right? Yeah, but even at that, if they had done it right, leading up into it, people are going to want to watch it, yeah. and they're still going to watch it. Even if they didn't watch it the moment it released, they were still going to watch it because they were be they were going to be invested in it. Yeah. So releasing all the episodes at once, um, it's just it's just it's bad marketing as far as I'm concerned. It's just maybe they just didn't have faith in it, and and they really surprised. <laughs> Could be, yeah, Could but be. They, yeah, but if they were already had already greenlit it for a second season before this episode mm -hmm. came out, I still think so, it comes down to them getting burned on their other shows, releasing them weekly, and then it not giving back the returns that they were hoping for. So they're just like, "Fuck it, just put it all out there and let's be done with it." That's mm -hmm. the only thing I could figure is that some yeah. they weren't getting numbers back on something and something because Rings you know, of Power didn't do great, right? Like I feel like Rings of Power it did good, but it, it, it again it pissed off the purists. Mm -hmm. Um. I thought it was fantastic. I like, I love Lord of the Rings. I thought it was a really good show. There was a few things that, about it that were off putting. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother show. Mm -hmm. But um, there are things that, you know, but I know that, that the numbers on that started high and then consistently dwindled as this episode. <laughs> I'm one went. of those people. I only watched the first two episodes. <laughs> I think I watched three. <laughs> I watched all of it. So, yeah. Um, Anyways, Amazon, get your shit together. Do it episodic. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Help us help you. <laughs> so yeah. 100%. We could have talked about your show for eight weeks. At yep. least. <laughs> eight weeks, at least. You know, because we would and we wouldn't have been the only ones. There would have been other podcasts, other shows oh. out there that have been talking about this series for a solid two months. Yeah. I mean, if at best we're gonna talk about Fallout on our other podcast for Screen Smash too, because it's game related, yeah. but we're yeah. not gonna go in any extreme right. de depth not or the detail. Depth that you would have. Yeah. Not that you would have. No. And why would you? You know, that's the thing. So it's a shame. <laughs> it's a take damn note, shame. Amazon. It's you know, a you're listening. Shame. Todd Howard, get on that. Fix it. Do it right. Every otherwise everything's great. We're all pretty happy yeah, with yeah. the show. We had Love a show. great time with it. Um no more burning puppies. Drop it episode <laughs> episodic. Uh but keep up the good work. It's good so far. Keep on yes. Keep on keeping on. Fantabulous, some would say. Okie dokie. Okie dokie dokie. <laughs> oh, look, we even got the bubble on the screen. <laughs> all right everybody that'll do it for us this week on couch soups watching now one-off podcast of the fallout series be sure to check it out if you're a fan of the games because it's good if you're a fan you can check it out if you're not a fan of the game because obviously everyone here who isn't a big fan enjoyed it as well uh be sure mm -hmm. to stay tuned with couch soup and keep up with all of our wonderful pop culture nerdy brain notness and uh let us talk more <laughs> give us more things that allow us to talk about it's just i can't get over the episodic thing like it's it's like <laughs> what the heck <laughs> let us feed your hungry nerd soul exactly what ian said all right everybody we'll see you next time away. goodbye Bye. Toki. Cock explode. <laughs> <laughs> uh.